I'm Dr. Lisa Hasty, one of the founders of the Atlanta Center for Reproductive Medicine. I'd like to welcome you to our session, An Introduction to In Vitro Fertilization. The following topics will be covered during this presentation. Who are the patients that need in vitro fertilization? How does this process actually work? What can the couple expect when they're going through treatment? And what are the actual risks of the procedures? Who are some of the couples that need in vitro fertilization? They include husbands with severe sperm problems, patients with egg problems, different pelvic factors such as blocked fallopian tubes, the disease of endometriosis, and pelvic scarring. Other patients that need this therapy may be patients that have failed simpler therapy with office treatment. These also include patients with unexplained infertility. One of the first tests that's performed as a couple goes through the workup is a semen analysis, and normal semen parameters include a volume of 2 to 5 milliliters, anywhere from 20 to 200 million sperm per milliliter, 50% motility, and in old criteria with WHO, 50% normal shape, and then newer, stricter criteria or 4% normal shape for the sperm. A typical total modal sperm count is greater than or equal to 20 million. When the semen analysis shows fewer than 5 million total modal sperm, or when the sperm morphology is less than 4% using the strict criteria, then in vitro fertilization should be considered as it can overcome these problems and achieve good fertilization. Another indication for in vitro fertilization may be egg problems, also referred to as diminished ovarian reserve. This is most frequently seen in women of advanced reproductive age, over 35 years of age, or in women with elevated FSH levels, which are greater than 10 units per ml. Diminished ovarian reserve typically indicates poor egg quality and or too few eggs remaining within the ovaries. Different studies have correlated IVF outcomes with baseline FSH levels. Because age is the most important prognostic factor in success with IVF, younger women can still have good outcomes in spite of elevated FSH levels. However, as women age, lower delivery rates are seen with elevated FSH levels. That helps explain the decreasing pregnancy rates that result from in vitro fertilization as women age. In this graph, the line with circles depicts the live birth rate in women using their own eggs relative to age. A decline in fertility and therefore live births is seen starting at around age 35. This decline becomes even more rapid at age 37. Every year thereafter, the pregnancy rate decreases in women using their own eggs. In comparison, women who use donor eggs have no significant decrease in pregnancy rates despite increasing maternal age. Tubal problems in women can be another indication for IVF. Open functional tubes are necessary for spontaneous conception to occur because the fallopian tube is where the egg and sperm first meet to form an embryo. Tubal problems include blocked or scarred tubes, which can result from previous pelvic infection, prior abdominal surgery, or even endometriosis. Tubal problems can interfere with sperm and egg migration or with the embryo returning to the uterus to implant. This can result in an ectopic pregnancy or a pregnancy outside of the uterus. Sometimes tubal problems can be corrected with surgery. However, many times damaged tubes cannot be fixed and must sometimes be removed. When the fallopian tubes are not working well, IVF is always an option because the process of IVF bypasses the fallopian tubes altogether. Women with endometriosis may also need in vitro fertilization. Endometriosis is the presence of the uterine lining or the endometrium in abnormal places, like the outside of the uterus and other places in the pelvis. This disease can cause pain in many and subfertility in most. When patients have pain from endometriosis, surgery is a very good treatment option. However, this surgery does not generally improve the associated subfertility. IVF gives women with endometriosis their best chance for conception. Finally, couples who have undergone office treatments like ovulation induction and intrauterine inseminations without resulting pregnancy may be also candidates for IVF.